I have been using Unity since 2016, and these are the tips and tricks that I have learned over the years that have improved my workflow and can hopefully improve yours too. I can't tell you how many hours I have spent testing where I wanted to test in full screen mode for the full experience, but started without the screen maximized or full screen button enabled. And an easy solution to this for a while was to just change the option, pause the game and unpause it. However, even pausing the game can really buffer the flow. Recently, I found that while in game with the game tab highlighted, if you mouse over it, right click, a bunch of options will open up with one of them being maximize. Simply press that button and the scene will immediately switch to full screen mode. Alternatively, another way to do this is by double clicking on the tab. When working with assets in Unity, I often find myself working in a grid based style. So the transforms of the objects are like to be in perfect increments. But updating these objects to work with these values can be extremely tiresome if you're just changing the values by hand. What you can do instead is grabbing the object in the scene and selecting a tool. Let's try the move tool. By holding control while you move, you will move the object in increments of 0.25 at a time. This works the same for the scale tool and the rec tool to change the values in the increments by grabbing onto the axis or grabbing the full scalar. Finally, my favorite is the rotate tool. Grabbing onto the axis here, holding control and slowly rotating will display a radial with 15 degree increments for that perfect rotate. On the note of scaling, another neat trick that I found too late in my career is this little tool which I believe to be only available for maybe Unity 2021 or 2022 onwards called Enable Constrained Proportions. If you click this and alter the values of say the X scale, it will constrain the ratio between the values from what they were. And on that, another lesser known tool is that all these values, even the ones that you create through code, have a hidden slider. If you place your cursor next to the input field on the left side, your mouse will be changed to a directional mouse. And if you hold the left click and drag left, you will decrease the value and right to increase the value. If you wish, you can also drag up to increase and drag down to decrease. And it doesn't stop at the edge of the screen, it actually repeats. So if you drag it off the screen, it will end up on the opposite end so you can drag infinitely. I don't know about you, but when I'm working on projects, I'm duplicating objects all the time. And it has always bothered me that the duplicated object names include the bracket and the number. But did you know that you can actually change this? At the top of the window, if you go edit, project settings, editor, and scroll down, there are actually options to change this. Personally, I go with the underscore value as I don't usually have brackets for any other objects in the scene and consistency is key. Now with game development, I am often creating manager objects and that always means right clicking in hierarchy, creating an empty game object and almost always having to reset the transform. But did you know that if you go edit, preferences and scene view, there's an option called create objects at origin that if you tick, all objects that you create in the editor will default to the origin of the scene. Now let's backtrack for a second. A few seconds ago, I reset the transform, but I manually typed out the values. Well, no more of that because being the efficient developers that we are, we simply hit right click on the transform and click reset. While working on personal projects, I love to use lists and arrays. They're beautiful. But you know what isn't beautiful? Manually assigning the items in the list. For far too long, I was dragging and dropping, which then developed to me locking the inspector. But all this time, there was something even easier. If you right click on the script, an option will appear for properties. And if you select that, then a new window will appear, which will always appear in the front of the editor. And the only way to close it is by hitting the X, meaning we can now individually open up objects or highlight objects as we need and drag them straight into the pop-up instance of the script. An honorable mention for a trick that I have picked up is focusing on objects in the scene. This is especially evident in 3D projects where you may notice some Z fighting and camera clipping while zooming around the scene. It's an extremely common issue people have had and while researching topics for this video, I even saw a recent Reddit thread about it. There's an extremely easy fix to this though, which is to just click on an object and click F on your keyboard to focus on it. It's going to move your camera to that object, but when moving around the scene afterwards, you'll notice that the clipping issue is completely gone. Now that we got most of the engine stuff out of the way, let's jump into some coding tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. Now, for my coding environment, I will be using Visual Studio Community, which is usually the default for Unity, but some of these tips should work with Visual Studio Code as the second popular choice. Now, if you're like me and rely on IntelliSense to scramble together your broken code, but find that sometimes IntelliSense just doesn't work at all, the main problem is usually to do with Unity recognizing your chosen editor as the main editing environment. To fix that, back in Unity, you want to navigate to Edit, then Preferences, External Tools, and where it says External Script Editor, 
you want to drop the menu and select your environment. While I'm at work, I am usually working in an extremely large code base, and it can be super hard to keep track of stack traces. So you should probably get in the habit of learning a few key shortcuts that will speed up your process. The first one will be F12, or if you're on a Mac, function F12, which is the shorthand way of navigating to a reference. Say you have a method call, but you don't know where it is or what it's called in. You can simply press F12 and it will immediately navigate you to that exact method in the script. Next. There have been so many hours where I have put code in the incorrect line, just to have to highlight it, cut it, and repaste it two lines below. But did you know you can actually just move lines around? By holding Alt on Windows or Option on Mac with a line selected, and it doesn't even need to be highlighted, just wherever you have clicked in the code, if you move the up and down arrow keys, you can move the line incrementally. This works the same by highlighting a piece of code as well to move it into different sections as well. Now, sometimes when I'm coding, I can get a bit messy to say the least, and an important tool to get used to not only for your own readability, but especially if you're in a team, is the formatter. If you select everything in a script by doing Ctrl A, you can do the command Ctrl K F in quick succession to auto format the entire script. Finally, a simpler one that's a bit more obvious, sometimes when I'm coding up a function, I forget what its purpose is or why there's certain parameters. And that may come down to either being a bad programmer or bad naming conventions. But whatever the reason, you can create summaries of methods that by default, when you're calling them anywhere in your code base, will appear as a sort of helper tool, which is an extremely common practice among developers that use shared code or universal methods. Here's an example. By typing three slashes above a function, a boilerplate summary and parameter list will appear that you can fill out in plain English to assist you. Let's take this function for example, which we're going to call disable game object and destroy, which will take in a game object and a bool. Above it, we can create our summary and fill it out and say something like, calling this will disable the game object. Then in our parameters, we can say that the game object is the reference and the bool is if we want to also destroy it. Then in a different part of the code, when we call the method, as we're typing it in, it will actually show us what the code is trying to do that we had set up. Now, if you guys like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with more Unity and c -sharp tutorials, as well as some game development videos on my upcoming tower defense roguelike set in ancient Greece. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to leave a comment down below with suggestions for other tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.